budgies and widgies and welcome back to the channel. It feels so good saying that after such a long time. I do apologize for the lack of uploads. My university semester started, which means I've been absolutely flat out with uni. But all of that boring stuff aside, today I bring to you the two year update on my native Australian lungfish Neo. I'll take you through how I got him, how he's been doing, the aquarium that he's in, everything that you need to know about this really awesome fish. And if you do end up enjoying this video after you finish watching it and you want to see further content that I put out, it would be really great if you did want to consider subscribing. But if you just enjoyed this video, you don't want to subscribe, then I would really, really appreciate just a thumbs up. But you watching really does mean a lot. Before we get into the lungfish though, as always, let's acknowledge you traditional custodians of the land and the people that are managing our land as well. But I say enough talking and it's time we have a look at this absolutely beautiful Australian lungfish. So Neo is a native Australian lungfish and their Latin name is Neoceratodus fosteri, hence the name Neo. It's a cute and simple name for an equally simple and adorable fish. Australian lungfish come from the family of Neoceratodontidae, which has three different species being the Australian lungfish, the African lungfish and the South American lungfish. The Australian lungfish though is the oldest living family member of the group and they've basically remained evolutionarily unchanged for around 100 million years. But they've been around for over 380 million years. So this is basically longer than the dinosaurs and you don't even have to think about it to realize that Australian lungfish are a true living fossil. Owning an Australian lungfish though is no easy task. These fish are on the ICUN protected species list, which means they actually can't be caught from the wild to be kept in captivity. A few years ago though, the Australian government gave clearance for a few broodstock to be collected by a company called Jardini International, who were then able to successfully breed the lungfish in captivity for the first time ever. Neo was purchased through livefish.com.au and he was purchased for the full retail price of $1,000. That price hasn't actually changed in Australia all that much and I do know that in places like the States, the price can be as high as $2,000 to $2,500 US dollars. He was flown from Queensland to the Melbourne airport where I picked him up on my birthday and that was just such a surreal experience because it was the first time I'd actually gone to the airport in order to pick up a fish. The last proper update of Neo was when he lived in my four foot shallow aquarium and this was used as a grow out system. This was actually a great tank for him to start his early stages of life in because of firstly the footprint, the water volume and how easily I could monitor him. Neo came in at around 13 centimeters back in 2021. However, he is currently a whopping 26.5 centimeters, meaning he has just over doubled in size. And from the research I've done, lungfish tend to near the one foot or 30 centimeter mark within the first two years of their life. And from here, it tends to slow down to around about a foot every five years or so. And they reach breeding maturity at around 15 to 17 years. And the average size of this tends to be around three to four feet. So Neo seems to be on the right track based off the rough idea of their growth rate. Now, the one thing to know here is that lungfish are a lifetime commitment. They're definitely not a fish for everyone because of the fact that they will reach around four to five feet in length when they're fully grown, and they will live for over 50 years in the right conditions. When Neo hit around 24 centimeters, I put him out of the four foot aquarium and he went into my five foot display aquarium. And whilst the width of this tank is the same as the previous one, the length and the height are a foot extra. And I thought that Neo wouldn't actually use the height as much as he does, but the amount of open water swimming this fish does in a day is truly surprising. Most of his day though, he's pretty much lounging around, not really doing anything at all. He can spend around half an hour just in a single spot with no movement. and. And I'll admit that sometimes when I enter the fish room and I see him in this weird position just frozen, I have a mini panic attack, but this fish, to call him lazy would just be an understatement. Nia has really gone over his early day shyness as well. When he first went into my four foot aquarium, he was incredibly shy for basically the first year and all he did was just hide. And whilst that did gradually improve, it's nothing like what it is now. Nowadays, I can just see Nia chilling on the sand bed whenever I take a glance at the aquarium and I think that confidence has really come with his size. He's also gotten much more chunkier than he previously was and I think that's gonna continue in proportion to his length moving forward. Nero has also had a pretty huge change in tank mate since he was in the four foot aquarium. A lot of the fish that you can currently see in the five foot consist of some South American, Asian and native Australian fish. 
and I do actually need to be kind of selective of the tank mates that I keep him with. And whilst Neo doesn't offer any concern of predation or aggression to any other fish that I've kept him with, and believe me, I've kept him with fish as small as cherry barbs, I actually do need to be selective of the fish that may potentially pick on him. I've had some South American cichlids in the past, especially the ones with sort of pointed mouths like severums, blue acara, and even angelfish, and these have been pestering the tail fin of Nier. You'll notice a divot in his tail, and this was actually the result of a severum just slowly nipping him over the past few weeks. This will heal perfectly with no issues, and just to speed things up, I am adding in a regular basis of stress coat. Aside from that, all the other fish I've been keeping Nier with in this tank now have worked out really well, and there's sort of a good equilibrium and I know what sort of fish I should be adding and what I shouldn't be adding so I think moving forward we should be pretty good. Feeding Nier has also always been a breeze. There's honestly nothing to update in that regard because whatever I feed him, that fish eats. But it consists of some fruit, some meat material, so that'll be like some fish protein, and the, the uh, sort of primary stable will be some sinking pellets. Alrighty, Vodges and Wingies, I really hope you did enjoy this video. I was hoping he'd be out just to give us a little bit of a show before we end this video, but I gave him a pretty hefty feeding and it's pretty late in the afternoon as well, so he's just chilling behind the log, having a bit of a nap but if you did have any further questions about his care or if there was anything that you thought that I missed out in this, on this video that you wanted me to talk about make sure you let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to address it there even if you didn't have any questions just saying cool fish <laughs> would really help just the overall performance of this video but you don't have to worry about that thank you so much for watching and as always stay happy stay safe stay Aussie Australian bodgy out